you and Sons could uh, continue. Uh, yes, yes, that's an excellent idea. A whole team. Um, Colin, uh, can I call you back? Uh, I'll call you back in a moment. Yes. Bye. Why did you come back? I missed you. I don't go away to be perverse, you know. Are you sure it's not just a test? A test of us? To see if you still do really want to live with me? If it is, then every time I find that I do. This time more strongly than before. And if I were to leave you? I shouldn't be as forbearing as you are with me. Don't mention God. Where were you? A hospice, looking after dying drunks. Gave me something to do that felt real for a while. People depended on me the way Daniel used to. Is that why you went? It's not just that. You know how I feel about being married into your world. God gets in the way sometimes. It must be much easier to love him than me. That's why I have to go off from time to time. It, it's not because I don't love you, but because I do. I know I'm a rotten wife. Only the clean sock marmalade making sense. You're a wonderful wife. I only mind about separation and expulsion. I will try. leaving us already, are you? No, no, I'm just going down to Warminster for the weekend. I miss it. Who will you see? Everyone, I should think. I'll probably stay with Leo.
Apart from being in it yourself, do you think the choir's actually important? Of course I do. Why? Well, because of the cathedral mm. and the music and, and because of God. You believe in God then? Of course. Why? Well, wouldn't be any of this without God. The cathedral wouldn't be there in the first place, would it? What about the boys from state schools in the city who can't get into the choir like you can? Oh, yes, they can. Harrison was at Man's Eugenia, and his parents don't pay fees. And Rodridge was at the comp. If your voice is good enough, all your fees get paid for you. Mm. You're not going to resign, are you? That would be awful. No, I'm not. Good. Wouldn't be like you to give up. Oh, sometimes there has to be change, you know? People change all the time. Relationships change. Your grandmother and I found that. Just couldn't stay together. It's impossible. It's painful when it happens. But in the end, see, it's for the best. Any news from your father? Mm, he might come back in August for a bit. Why did you say that? About change? You best be getting back. Give your mother my love. We had a bit of a barney about the choir. But uh, tell her I'll be around soon. Bye, old son. Bye, Grandpa. Thanks for coming round. on home tutoring. Um, another coffee, please. So, how are you? You look terrific. What's up? Nicholas has come back for the weekend. He wants to stay at my place. So what did you say? <laughs> well, what could I say? Mrs. Ashworth is coming over to make wild, passionate love with me. Never mind. Probably for the best. No, but I, I was going to come over to you again. Not with Henry there. Listen, we've got to tell him sometime. I mean, we can't keep on like this. I'm proud of you. I love you. There's nothing to be ashamed of. Oh dear. So why? Why can't we tell him? Not yet. Are you changing your mind? No, I'm not, but things have to be done properly. I think I might go and see my mother for the day, try and clear my head. Is there any news from Alan? You, you have written to him. I haven't written to him about us, no. No, but about your marriage. I will. Oh, God, Sally. Look, Leah, I've got to go and pick up Henry. I'll call you later. When? I don't know, later on. But... I do love you. be seen to do anything. It will give Hugh Cavendish too much of a stick to beat you with. Yeah, that I do know. Here's a copy of the electoral roll. I've marked everyone I think would sign a petition within a mile radius of the cathedral. There's no point in asking just anyone. When did you do this? Most of this morning. Here's the petition. Sandra says she'll duplicate 500 copies once we get the wording right and she'll organise a rota street by street. This is wonderful. 
then there's the Choir Schools Association. I'm sure we can get an emergency committee set up with some really big names on it. Durham, Canterbury, Wells. Let's go through the parents' list. No, no, I, I'll get a bottle of something first. The off-licence at the East Gate No, wait a open. minute. I'll go and ask the Cavendishes. Confronting the enemy camp. I want to show my face, just to remind them. It isn't a cup of sugar I'm after, Hugh, but a bottle of wine. My dear girl, we heard you were back. Come in. There isn't a drop in the house. Look, look who it is. My dear Felicity, how extraordinary. That I should come back at all. Now, you mustn't start by calling Bridget's bluff. Huffer, I can't think what you mean. I'm afraid I've come to scrounge a bottle of wine. A white burgundy? Blanc de Blanc? Something very ordinary. You're very kind, Hugh. Why have we not seen you sooner, Felicity? I've returned to find you all at each other's throats. <laughs> there have been grave misunderstandings and severe overreaction. You must come and see me properly. We must sort it all out, sensibly. I always feel women are so much more sensible than men. So much less emotional. A present for me. Us. To celebrate your return. Oh, I didn't mean it to be a present, Hugh. But I do. Now, let us see you very soon, please. You and Alexander, come to supper. We will telephone. God bless you, my dear Felicity. You're such a fool, Huffo. And you make such a fool of me. Do I, my dear? Thank you, gentlemen, for your contributions. The proposal is that girls should be admitted to the school on the same basis as boys from Michaelmas term 1998. Those in favor? Against? Abstentions? The motion is passed. And now, gentlemen, the choir. We are faced by a momentous decision. About one-third of the chapter's income is consumed by the choir. In the face of other demands, it appears that present-day circumstances do not, for the time being, permit us the luxury of... It is not a luxury. Canon Troy. The choral tradition of England is the finest in the world. It's not simply a vital part of our heritage, but it's something so important that we have no business to deny it to future generations. But we can't let the cathedral fall down. That's all right by future generations, is it? Will everyone please address the chair and phrase their comments courteously? My case, Mr. Chairman, is that both must be safe. How? It's a simple question of finance. <laughs> a simple question of finance, is it? Was there not a plan to approach the city council? It is the opinion of many city councillors that cathedral choirs are an astonishing anachronism. Yeah, 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 yeah. The fact that this school is scandalously short of good laboratories is far more urgent. Mm. I'm bound to say I see the strength of that argument. Do you indeed, Mr. Dean? Then may I quote? Old Horovian, Hugh Cavendish, Dean of Oldminster, is a slick hand at raising the readies. There is a good deal of inaccuracy in that report. Without an appeal, he has raised £90,000 for new nave lighting by knowing where to ask. You were saying about the laboratories. It is a question of priorities. The headmaster is, of course, highly musical, which naturally enters into his judgment. I'm also a clergyman. <laughs> Perhaps we're not. The one thing that I regret about all this is that it's become so personal. We've become divided because clearly some deep personal chord has been struck in us all by the choir. And oddly enough, that gives me my one glimmer of hope. I ask for a temporary reprieve. I will try to devise a scheme to save something that I earnestly believe to be vital. A reprieve of a year. Well, may I suggest a compromise? 
If Canon Troy wishes to explore avenues towards making the choir self-financing, I suggest we allow him to produce a viable plan by the next governor's meeting. When's that? October. Four months. A fair suggestion, gentlemen, don't you think? Four months isn't long enough and you know it. Well, shall we vote on it? You should listen to him, really you should. He's gravely short-sighted not to. Gentlemen, I have not quite finished, Mr. Deegan. You and I are about to be heavily outvoted. But before we are, I should like to make one thing clear and public. Ours is the truly Christian point of view, and therefore we are right. And you may all outvote us until you are blue in the face, but you can't alter that. Bravo. Those in favor? Against? Four months, my dear sir. Improbable, but not impossible. I'm not much used for anything but prayer and addressing envelopes. I'll do that with a will, just say the word. You have the position. Yes, I, I suppose I do. Everyone would be hugely relieved. The damage it's causing is immense. But unfortunately, I'm privy to some information which must affect my judgment and which cannot be made public. What sort of information? <laughs> I can't even tell you that. It's my fault I asked for it, literally. And it spikes my guns. Suppose it did come out. Then the fight would be even bloodier, my dear Felicity, but, but thank you for stirring me up about this. Clearly, I must do something. Oh, I wish you would. Couldn't you go and talk to the Dean today or tomorrow? Oh, no, these things must be done in their own time. Of course they must, but there's so little time left. And your voice would make so much difference. I shall do what I can. We loved each other once, but it died a long time ago, and we've got used to living without it. I've been over and over what has happened to us, Alan, and I've decided that our marriage must end. Mum, we have a puppy. She always got two, Mac and Tosh. Mac and Tosh, get it? No, Henry, we can't. Who would look after it? She always mum's at home all day, cooking and things. She looks after this. <laughs> Sorry. Surely there'll be a big appeal. Of course there will. But every penny was drained for the organ restoration. And they need a million and a half. There's only one way to solve that. You can't just give up. Yeah, well, it doesn't seem to be up to me anymore. The Dean wants to see me because I've been campaigning. He can stop anyone on the staff. But they can't. They just can't.
She used to knock. And do I have my future mother-in-law's approval? That's not why I went, and you know it. And I don't want any tea. I don't know it. I don't see that you need to talk to anyone about me. It's more complicated for me. I have a husband and a child. It's going to be more of a battle. And whose side will your mother fight on? Well, she doesn't think I'm right, but she'll support I'm me. thoroughly decent and gracious. Uh, Leo, don't be cross. I'm not cross. But you won't let me get anywhere near you. I want to share these things with you. I want to marry you, you stupid woman. But you're all knotted up and distant and complicated. I'm married already, remember? <sighs> but you have written to Alan about that, haven't you? Leo! I'm trying to separate divorcing Alan and being with you. You've made me see clearly that I can't go on as I am. But I have to be sure that I'm marrying you for your sake, for our own sake. Do you understand? No. What does that mean? That I have to be by myself for a while. I see. There's no thought for me. You're trying to make me feel guilty, just like Alan does. Well, I'm not going to take it from you either. I'm not going to stagger around under a burden of gratitude and grief anymore. Fireworks. This is ridiculous, Sally. You're trying to pretend that we don't exist. But I don't exist. Well, we do. I do. And it's about time you decided to do something about it. These are my decisions about my life, and I'll make them when I'm good and ready. I don't have to answer to anybody for them. Not my mother, not Alan, not Henry, and not you. You can sit here and sulk if you want to. I don't care. Well, you bloody well should. I'll go to hell with the rest of them. Right, in a cathedral close. It's like living next door to some student hostel. He's a brilliant organist. Well, that's not everything. Not if your personal life is in a mess. The dean agrees. The dean? He agrees with me. About Leo's private life. I know you are aware of the petition because you signed it. As I had every right to. That is what I question, Beckford. 2,000 signatures isn't something you can just ignore. It is not your place publicly to defy your employers. We've been in agony over the future of the choir. <laughs> Do you think I haven't? You will in future refrain from stating your 
opposition in public. You seriously expect me to sit quietly on my hands and say nothing? You were head of music in this cathedral under most unusual circumstances, as a divorced man. Oh, I failed to see that Robert, who persuaded Chapter to act charitably towards you. I think in return we may look for a little loyalty from you in times of crisis. My loyalty is to the choir. It must be. And I don't believe you can legally stop me. You can only dismiss me for gross public scandal, as far as I remember. I believe that is the case, yes. Well, I've no wish to inquire into your private life, none whatever. But I would point out only this. Were you to be requested to resign in the reason made known, there is not another cathedral in England that would touch you. Well, concentrate, you're a beat early. And we'll go back to bar 213. There's no crescendo here. Where are the marks? You didn't turn up to special gym this afternoon. That's the second time. I'm sorry, sir. Where were you? What were you doing? I was in the cloisters, sir. In the cloisters? I failed to see how Farrell. I... Farrell. I'm responsible for what happened this afternoon. I'm talking to Ashworth Beckford. Perhaps you kindly not interfere. I said I was responsible, you great bully. Don't take it out on Ashworth. If I want to discuss something with a pupil, I don't need your permission or your interference. Just shut up while I talk to the boy, would you? Listen. Listen, do yourself a big favour. Instead of making trouble for small boys all the time, try wrestling with the concept that there are other values in life besides chucking oneself about and throwing things. Alexander. Good afternoon. We're delighted to see Felicity in the close again. Such a joy to have her back. Yes. But it's distressing she seems intent on worsening the atmosphere in the close, making things more difficult for everyone. What are you talking about? Her involvement in the campaign, Alexander. It's embarrassing and divisive. She's entitled to her own opinion. But as your wife... My wife has strong feelings about the choir, Hugh, as many do. Excuse me. Oh, one more thing. I have a duty to warn you. We face a crisis of such magnitude over the roof repairs... Yes? ...that I cannot entirely rule out the sale of the headmaster's house... ...to raise substantial funds. You said you'd fight that tooth and nail. Oh, I shall. I say we must not entirely rule it out... ...depending on how things develop. Another £480 pledged. And Peter Murphy's father, the MP, says he'll put down a question to the Heritage Minister if you want. Indeed I do. Have you had any lunch? No. We are doing all this through the Parents Association, aren't we? 
Yes. Because if we do it through the association, then we're impregnable. But if it's done through me personally, then I'm liable to sanction. They wouldn't try. Who would do that? Who would you think? Oh, my legs are dropping off. The 303 more signatures. It's over 2,000. That's wonderful. I've made it so hard for you. I just don't think I realised how much without purpose I'd be after Daniel left. But you found one now. Yes, I hope so. Do you think you could talk to Leo and Sally for me? They haven't been talking to each other. They've had some terrible kind of row, and perhaps you could get them to talk to me again, too. Sure. Poor things. You never think living could be so hard, wherever you do it. I will tell the headmaster, but I can't promise anything. You see, Mr. Farrell has invited the choir's going. Goodbye. And Leo? Between you and me, I think Mr. Beckford's being a bit temperamental. He'll still have a job. Sandra, I need to see him for a few minutes. When will be a good time? He's got two hours off now. He usually goes back home. What a pretty ring. May I see? Oh, Sandra, it's so pretty. Did Colin choose it? We went together. He told me what his budget was and let me choose. He's paying it off over two years on his credit card. How very sensible. Yes, he is. <laughs> Sorry I'm late. Hi, Nick. Hi. Did you see Leo? Yeah, yeah, I stayed with him. And? Uh, he's pretty cut up. The choir's going at Christmas. Going? You mean my father's won? Mm. The council turned it down, and the cathedral can't afford to keep it on. I think it's terrible. Will Leo be out of a job? Well, they're not getting rid of the organ, just the choir. Though if that happened, I'm not sure Leo could bear to stay. What's that? Just listen. I know you don't like this kind of music. You said I didn't like it. What is it? Talis, Salvador Mundi. No, I mean who? Why are you playing it? It's the choir. Do you want a coffee? Listen, I think we could help. Get Mike to record this. Make a CD. Uh, Leo on the organ, Henry Ashworth singing. Market it through the rock channels. It would be something unusual. We're not in the choir boy business. No, but it would help Leo, wouldn't it? How? Save his choir. He'll do anything for that, anything. He's desperate. Let me talk to Mike about it. He's with the Dean, Felicity. A special meeting. I can give him a message if you wish. It doesn't matter, thank you. Now, don't forget, suffer any day this week or next week apart from Wednesday and Friday. Bridget, don't be obtuse. And don't patronize us. I beg your pardon? Unless you want a full-scale row in your dining room, supper is out of the question, and you know it. Nice voice. Old 
is he? Just 11. Did you, um... Were you as good? Promoted as a Save the Dying Choir CD. If we're really wound in on publicity. What do you know about publicity? More than you think. I'm impressed. I'm sure there are lots of other songs we could use. Leo would tell you. I don't know, something a bit more commercial, maybe. Probably not your sort of music anyway. I like it. Classical training. It might be worth a crack, but we'd have to record the whole thing in a couple of sessions. Why not? And we'd want that boy. Henry Ashworth? Yeah, he's good, isn't he? Oh, that shouldn't be a problem. I mean, Sally will say yes, won't she? Well, that's it then. Not quite. You've still got to get permission from your father. Do you mean waive the facility fee? Well, to help save the choir? Absurd idea. Save nothing. I will waive nothing. Out of the question. Alexander doesn't think so. Alex, Canon Troy may do as he pleases. I am the Dean of Oldminster. <sighs> That's why you can help us. I would require our customary fee of £300. It is also highly improbable that during the very difficult period when the new lighting is being installed, the two consecutive evenings could be reserved for your recording. The whole idea is childish in the extreme. You're a bloody old hypocrite, a bigot. A dog in the manger, and I hate you! I am, Pete. You realise I'm torn between a wife's natural duty and a mother's love. I suppose you're referring to Ianthe. She's been talking to me. Her heart's in it, Huffer. If her head were in it, the scheme might have the smallest chance of success. You're so hard, Huffo. So unforgiving. No doubt that is how you wish to see it. I see it differently. I dislike open defiance in the close. I abhor the self-indulgent emotionalism of such men as Alexander Troy. And I am offended by the crude amateurism of Ianthe's plan. Not for myself, but because it is the cathedral. It is the cathedral that will suffer. Well, at least I can say that I know my children. No doubt. Well, now, if you'll forgive me, I must get on. I leave you to contemplate the anguish of your position. My aunt is put in 25. I've put in 200. So we're after you for the rest? Well, we don't seem to have any choice, do we? Great! That's it. At least somebody's doing something. What about Sally? What did she say? Uh, <clears throat> I haven't seen her yet. I'll get Henry to ask her. Great. Well, I can't talk to Leo at the moment. I'm not going to climb out of one box and into another. You don't have to climb into anything. You do with Leo. He wants me to tell him everything. But that isn't the same thing at all. It's all been so sudden. Does that frighten you? No. Yes. Well, it's not logical. I suppose there'd be something wrong if it was. Excuse me. Is there an ancient history section? Yeah. It's just through here.
Ashworth, old chap. Um, any news from your mother yet? Mm -hmm. Move it back a couple of feet, Nick. I want a bit of air on the main mic. Right. Here? And move the space mics back a bit. That's it. Okay. Set, Leo. Okay, Henry, let's put one down. Henry Ashworth, take one in your own time.
That's it, everyone. We got it. Thank you, Henry. Well done, mate. It's just superb. I told you, didn't I? Yes. <sighs> Look, um, I, I just, uh, I was going to see you. 